Hi there, this is Jason McConnell, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a stippled airbrush effect in Photoshop that'll help you add a little more dimension to your artwork. And if I just zoom into the cherries here so you can see, this trick gives you nice hard edges between the colors, so there's no blurring involved, and it'll make it a whole lot easier to recolor and to prep it for sending it to get printed. Okay, so let's get started. All you have to do is go to the brush tool and make sure your mode is set to dissolve. And I just have a brush here that's set to 60 pixels and hardness of 100, so we'll start with there. And then I'm going to go over all these options up top because these will all control how dense your brush gets. So if I make a stroke there, you see that's pretty much not what we wanted. It's way too dense. But if I zoom in, you'll see that the edges start to get a little bit stippled. Okay, so it's just too dense right now. So one way to control this is go to the hardness level and lower that. So if I go down a little bit further, and now when I draw, you'll see it's dense towards the middle, but it fades out and gets less dense towards the edges. Okay, if I went all the way down, to zero hardness, it's even less dense. Okay, so that's one way to adjust the density. Another way, and let me just change this hardness level all the way back up, is the opacity level. If you lower your opacity, your brush will be less dense. The problem with the opacity is that it's not going to allow you to build up the stippling. You'll have to let go of your mouse or your brush and click again, let go and click again to build it up. So I usually don't use this option. Let me just set that back to 100. The option next to it, if you have a Wacom tablet, you can press that and this works off of pressure. So the lighter you press, the less dense, and the harder you press, the more dense it gets. So this is pretty useful. Okay, up next is flow. I usually use flow in combination with the hardness level of the brush. So let's lower this. I'm usually somewhere between five and 15%, but obviously you can use it however you like. And flow is going to allow you to change the density and have a buildup. So the more I go over and across these areas, the more it builds up. And if I go ahead and lower the hardness level, which by the way, a shortcut is shift and left bracket to make it softer. I don't know if you saw the brush size get smaller, it's because the hardness level went softer. And shift right bracket will make the brush harder. So I'm gonna go pretty soft. And now we have a nice light brush that we have control over here. The last option that I'll show is the button far on the right. Always use pressure for size. So this can be used if you have a tablet. If you don't, it's okay. You can do all this airbrushing without a tablet. So how this works is the softer you press, the smaller your brush is. The harder you press, the bigger brush is. So maybe just to see this a little bit better, I'm gonna harden my brush. To do that again, it's shift and right bracket. And then I'll click really soft and then press harder, and then softer. Okay, so just to recap, the hardness level, the lower the hardness level, the less dense your brush will be. Make sure your mode is set to dissolve. Opacity, you can change that as well to adjust the density of the brush. If you have a Wacom tablet, you can use this option right here to adjust the density depending on how hard you press. And then again, flow, I use this quite a bit. I just lower the flow a lot to give me a little more control over the density. This last one will adjust the size of your brush if you have a Wacom tablet. So let's put this to use. And I'm gonna go back over the cherry. And I have a clean one here without airbrushing. And if I was going to add airbrushing here, I would select the cherries. Make sure there's no anti-alias up here. 
Otherwise, you're going to add a blurry edge to this nice clean artwork. And I'll click in here. So I've selected only the red. And then back to my brush. And maybe I'll pick a darker red. So I'm just going to hold Option and click in the red to pick up the red for my foreground color. And then I'll just make it a little bit darker here. And then all you do is paint along the edges. So maybe my flow is a little bit low. And go around. If you found that you ate too much into your other color, you can always pick up that other color and soften that up and airbrush that out. All right, maybe I'll pick up a different color, a little bit darker. Just add a third color in here to give it a little bit more depth. And I'm going to go ahead here and fast forward this so you can just see how this works quickly. And that's all that's to it. I've added a little bit more depth to the print. I'd probably go back in and touch up a few areas. But it's a nice way to add some clean stippled airbrush effects. So a couple last tidbits before I go. To change your brush size as we did before, the right bracket will make the brush bigger. The left bracket will make your brush smaller. Shift and left bracket will make your brush softer. Shift and right bracket will make your brush harder. And then a newer option for, I believe, CS6 and up, if you hold Control and Option on a Mac, I believe it's right click and Alt on Windows. And you click and drag to the right, it'll make your brush bigger on the fly. And if you go up, it'll soften your brush. The stippling, the size of the dots, is dependent on the resolution of your file. Um, there are some workarounds to getting bigger dots, and there's other ways to do this airbrushing. Uh, which we'll get into in another video. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.